The A4N is the Israeli tech tree's ultimate Skyhawk in War Thunder. Let's check it out. Israel has been a prolific user of the A4 Skyhawk, ordering hundreds of them from the mid-1960s onwards, and would eventually become the single biggest export customer for the type. In Israeli service, the A4 saw extensive combat during the 60s and 70s, and during the War of Attrition and the Yom Kippur War, the Skyhawks were major contributors to the air campaigns in both of those conflicts. Beginning in 1973, the Israeli Air Force began using the upgraded A4N. This was a modified version of the A4M, which itself was a pretty extensive upgrade that was used by the U.S. Marine Corps. The M version had additional cannon ammo, improved avionics, an upgraded engine, a completely redesigned weapon system, which allowed for much more accurate ground strikes, as well as both a TV and laser target designator. This was such a significant upgrade over previous models, they renamed it the Skyhawk II to differentiate it from the earlier versions. When Israel imported the Skyhawk II, it was renamed A4N, and some changes were made to its equipment, mainly its IFF system, its radios, and some minor changes to the engine system to operate a little bit better in the Middle East climate. These new upgraded jets were immediately put into service, and represented a significant boost in combat capability over previous models of the A4, and one of them even shot down a MiG-17 during the 1982 war in Lebanon. The A4 was retired by Israel in 2008 and shifted into a training role, but a few of the N-model jets have been operated by civilian air training companies to provide pilot instruction and dissimilar air combat training to a few different Western Air Forces. What we get in War Thunder is the A-4N, a strike aircraft in rank 6 of the Israeli Air Tree with a battle rating of 9.3. In real life, the A-4N carries air-to-ground targeting radar, but in-game, it's not functional even though it's modeled in the plane. You do get a ballistics computer that provides a CCIP and CCRP for the dumb bombs, but strangely, nothing for the unguided rockets. The weapon selection on the A4N is pretty extensive, with a huge array of options for dumb bombs, gun pods, rocket pods, air-to-air -air missiles, and TV-guided air-to-ground ordnance. The two air-to-air -air missiles you get are the AIM-9D and the Shafrir-2. Now, these are both caged seeker IR missiles with just a few minor differences. The Shafrir 2 has a larger warhead and a wider seeker angle, but the AIM 9D has slightly better range and its seeker has a better gimbal angle. In actual gameplay, the Shafrir is easier to get a lock with and it hits harder, but the 9D tracks slightly better and is marginally more resistant to flares. Both are 18G missiles and it's really personal preference, but a few of the loadouts let you take four Shafrirs as opposed to just two 9Ds, so that's what a lot of players end up going with. For air-to-ground weapons, there are some really strong options. First up is the GBU-8. This is an enormous TV-guided bomb with a huge warhead, and if you get lucky dumping this on people capturing a point or something, you can occasionally get multiple kills with it. The AGM-62A Walleye-1 ER Glide Bomb has better range than the GBU-8, and you can launch it from a pretty good distance if you've got enough altitude, and you can carry two of them. Generally speaking, these are used to attack individual targets, but they're very accurate, and they hit hard enough to take out almost anything on a direct hit. Lastly, the AGM-65A Maverick is a pretty basic TV-guided anti-tank missile. It has good accuracy and reasonable range, combined with a pretty solid armor penetration rating. 
Unlike the two guided bombs, you need direct hits to kill targets with the Maverick, as they use an anti-tank warhead instead of regular explosive charge, but when you do hit with them, things usually pop. The flight performance of the A4N can be a little tricky. This is a subsonic bomb truck that frequently finds itself tangling with transonic and supersonic dogfighters. It has a solid roll rate, and it turns reasonably well compared to similar subsonic aircraft, but there are major limitations. Despite having the strongest engine of any A4 version currently in War Thunder, it still lacks an afterburner, and the acceleration under 400 kilometers an hour can be kind of frustrating as you're just sitting there waiting for airspeed. It also impacts landing, as the poor engine response at low speeds means that you can't really lag below the power curve at all when you're on final approach. Its rate of climb is heavily dependent on both its speed and its weapon load, but for best results, I recommend trying to speed up to around 700 kilometers an hour before pulling up, if at all possible. Now, it's got a very effective air brake, which is actually pretty important in this plane, and I'll discuss that in a minute. But there are two serious problems. First, like the other A4s, this plane's wings seem to be made out of plywood and absolutely love to snap off if you're doing aggressive maneuvers, especially if you've got some ordnance. Unequip the hydraulic boosters and hope for the best, but wing rips are still somewhat more common here than they are with other jets in this tier. Second, well, the payload. This plane can carry an absolutely enormous amount of weapons, and that isn't the problem. The problem is that with anything but the lightest payloads and loadouts, this jet's performance absolutely goes to dog shit. And if you've got anything heavier than a couple of chaffriers out on the wings, you're just a free kill in air combat if your wings don't rip off trying to maneuver. You have to fly this jet incredibly carefully before dropping your weapons. So if you struggle at first, it's not you, it's the plane. Just practice a bit, probably in test flights, and you'll get the hang of it. Flying into air battles with the A4N can be very rewarding, but also kind of frustrating. It's possible to take this thing out with missiles and use it as a fighter, but it'll usually be outperformed by a lot of the planes it's fighting against. Using it as a ground pounder can often be the frustrating part, since it's much slower than jets like the F-4, Jaguar, Su-7, or some of the other strike jets in its range, so it's frequently going to find itself getting halfway to a target, then the target's destroyed, and now you're 10 seconds away from getting jumped by half the red team, and you're still full of bombs. So, good luck with that. However, if and when you do get to the ground targets, the A4N will deliver some really serious damage, and you can actually rack up a lot of points with it. Now, the real use case for this plane, in my opinion anyway, is for close air support. This is one of the best close air support jets in the Israeli air tree, and with its huge selection of TV-guided weapons and a CCIP for the dumb bombs, as well as countermeasures and the radar warning receiver, the A4N can be a real champion. I've found that the best way to use this plane is similar to a lot of the others in CAS. Climb up at the start of the match and get over the battlefield high enough that you'll be a difficult target for the SPAA to find, at least five or 6,000 meters. Then, when you see a spotted target or like a point being capped or something, zero your throttle, dive almost straight down and extend your air brake. Remember I said that was important? Then, when you're in your dive, set up your weapon targeting, which sometimes it will take a couple of seconds with the TV guided weapons, so, you want as little airspeed as possible in a guided weapon dive, unless you're attacking something that moves really fast and you're worried about it getting into cover. The Mavericks can work reasonably well in medium range attacks from a bit more of a horizontal angle, which can be useful if you want to hit someone hiding under a bridge or something, but really the walleyes and the GBUs are best used from a more vertical drop. Overall though, 
the A4N is outstanding as close air support, and for me, that's the plane's primary use. Visually, the A4N looks a lot like the other Israeli A4s, and I still think it's a really good looking jet. The hunchback and the extended tailpipe make the upgrades obvious, and overall I think this is a really great plane to look at. Landing is relatively easy, just remember that the landing gear is very tall, so you can't go doing S-turns on the runway or anything like that since you'll tip over. The A4N can safely drop its gear and flaps around 400 kilometers an hour, and the plane gets a drag chute, so as long as you're not coming in too hot or anything, the landing run probably won't be very far. The plane has a pretty standard A4 cockpit with great visibility to the sides and front, the beginnings of a useful heads-up display, and a visible radar warning receiver, which is always something I look for. Overall, great cockpit. It was a joy to fly this in VR. To close out on the Israeli A4N. This plane has an excellent selection of air-to-ground weapons. It gets a ballistics computer for its dumb bombs, it gets countermeasures, and it's Flight performance is pretty good without two tons of bombs hanging off of it. However, it has serious wing rip issues, it's subsonic, and it flies like a beached whale when you're carrying ordnance. The final verdict on the A4N is that this plane is great for close air support, and kind of meh in air battles. Ever since the A4 family lost their air spawns, they've struggled hard in air battles, especially if they get a down tier into a match where other friendly planes do get an air spawn. But with all of its TV guided weapons, the A4N can dish out some heavy punishment if you fly it out into ground battles. This plane is absolutely credible in close air support, right up into the top tiers if it's flown well. As always, thanks for watching.